Welcome to Shapoko Backlash, Deflection and Vibration. I'm looking at the various elements of deflection and backlash measurable on my Shapoko. From the measured behaviour, I'll attempt to localise and explain the main sources of that deflection and backlash, and then fit a simple model to them to explore that behaviour. The intent is to understand where this unwanted motion comes from, to better manage the machine and determine what benefit, if any, various potential upgrades might provide. This is all based on a single sample machine, my XXL with the HDZ axis. The model is deliberately simple and may raise as many questions for you as it answers, but hopefully this is a step along the way to a better understanding of the machine and how best to use it. Since the announcement of the Shapoko Pro, there's been considerable interest in the changes made to that machine, so I'll also take a look at those changes and which of them might be worth replicating as upgrades to a Shapoko 3. Doing this, I've spent quite some time taking a lot of rather boring measurements. I initially just wanted to answer the question of whether belt tension affected backlash, but the task quickly snowballed. Each measurement seemed to pose at least as many new problems as it resolved, and in many cases I had to go back and re-measure previous items. Hopefully, this means others will be able to spend their time on more interesting things instead. I've also done some maths, but there's no need to follow or even read the maths unless you want to. All the deflections discussed here are less than 0.4mm, or 15 thou. These are small numbers, and the machine is capable of work much more precise than this. That does not, however, mean that we don't want it to be better, or to do that work faster. We'll look at what are deflection and backlash, and why do we care? How deflection, vibration, and resonance are connected to each other? And then, looking at elements of the machine, we'll look at deflection in the baseboard, V-wheel deflection, drive belt deflection on the x-axis and how that varies with position, v-wheel friction and how that actually produces backlash, and finally y-axis deflection behaviour and what affects this. The deflection measurements are all taken using 50 newtons of force applied to the spindle. That's approximately 11 pounds force or 5 kilograms weight. This value was chosen because it represents a large enough force to cause measurable deflection, but it's still below the stepper motor breakaway torque. It's larger than the average cutting forces most users will produce on a Shapoko, however the vibration forces once resonances are triggered can be much larger than the mean cutting force as we build up energy in the vibrating mass. To understand the machine behaviour, it's important to recognise that the total deflections at the spindle are the sum of the individual deflections of a series of components. I'll attempt to break these down into sensible parts and represent their individual and cumulative contributions. For example, here is the left-right deflection on the x-axis. The graph shows the sum of the x-deflection building up as we move from the frame to the cutter, via initially the y-rail sideways deflection, it's small but it's present, and then the y-plate deflection allowed by the v-wheels, then the x-belt deflection measured at the side of the HDZ, then the z-carriage wobble on the x-rail, and that's measured at the side of the spindle, and then finally the z-carriage rotation about the x-rail measured down at the collet. In summary, my measurements suggest that there are substantial differences in the achieved rigidity, backlash and vibration performance between the Shapoko and the XL and XXL machines. Also, the model indicates these don't scale as you might expect between the machines. The XXL is a very different machine to the Shapoko 3. And if, like me, you've seen how Shapoko users can cut materials like aluminium and you're wondering why you can't achieve the same on an XXL, it's probably not just your technique. The deflections on the XXL are much larger than on the Shapoko 3. On the X-Beam, for example, 0.3mm on the Shapoko 3 becomes 2.2mm on the XXL for the same load, just due to physics. The belt deflections and backlash approximately double on the XL and XXL longer axes. And finally, the V-wheel wobble should be the same between machines, but it makes a much larger by proportion contribution to overall deflection in the more rigid, small Shapoko 3. I found some cases where tuning the machine is directly trading achieved accuracy for cutting speed. For example, increasing V-wheel tension to reduce cutting vibration directly increased the backlash on that axis. The belt deflection behaviour also varies substantially, not just with the belt material and machine, but with the machine position in X and Y, and this is more significant on the XL and XXL machines. There are graphs later on showing how these and some of the other deflections interact. As in any machine, the deflections and backlash in the machine allow for vibrations and resonances to develop when cutting. 
The relatively large deflections per unit force, coupled with quite low damping of the machine, allow for large resonant vibration amplitudes to develop quite easily. Once these resonances develop, it can take large changes in cutting parameters to quell them, and to many users this may well represent the limiting factor on cutting speed. These vibration modes are also likely to vary substantially between the Shapoko XL and XXL machines, with lower frequency vibration modes occurring on the longer axis machines. I found that the calibration for steps per millimetre of the machine is much more complex than it at first appears to be. The actual distance moved per step varies with at least the following. Variation in V-wheel rolling resistance with V-wheel preload, as you tighten them up they become stiffer. Variation in rolling resistance as the machine moves, caused by accumulated chips and dust on the axis rails and wheels, as well as any wear or damage to the wheels. Variation in belt forces with axis position, and finally possible small variations in the precision of the belt tooth spacing. Belt tension. In a previous video I looked at belt tension, how to measure it and what sort of tension is desirable on the machine. One of the open questions from that work was whether increasing belt tension usefully reduced backlash. This analysis suggests that no, increasing belt tension above the base minimum does not further reduce backlash. In light of this, and considering the rated radial loads on the stepper motor shafts, here's an updated table for belt tension frequencies. Looking at the Shapeoko Pro, when viewed through the lens of these XXL deflection measurements, the upgrades on the Pro make a lot of sense for an XXL sized machine. In rough order of benefit, the reinforced base and spoil board are a significant improvement. And then there's the linear rails vaccine getting rid of the V-wheel problem. And then there's the slightly improved belts. But note, the return from the steel core to fiberglass for belt reliability does absorb some of that benefit. Then the y-axes brace down against the base, and finally the milled front and rear frames. These changes put together deal with many of the deflection sources I've identified, and in pretty much the order I would upgrade my machine to. Speaking of upgrades, the next question is, what upgrades might I want to do, and in what order? It's clear that some upgrades will deliver a lot more benefit for the cost or effort than others. My non-negotiable top upgrade is replacement of the old belt-driven Z-axis with either the Z Plus or HDZ. I consider this to be an entry point for anyone concerned with deflection on their machine. The severity of the issues you're seeing, and therefore the order of upgrades, depends on which size machine you have. Some issues are the same across all sizes, others vary quite substantially. This table proposes an approximate priority order for upgrades based on these measurements and models. You may well not agree with it, but it's a good place to start arguing from. It turns out there's quite a lot to get through here, so I've broken the rest of this up into two more parts. In the next part, we'll go through the main sources of the deflection I found in my machine, understand what causes them and what unwanted movements they allow. We'll then look at how cutting forces interact with deflection, how that then allows vibration and resonances to develop, and how this ends up limiting our cutting speeds. In the final part, we'll use all the measurements I took to move on from just measuring tension, and we'll properly understand how the drive belts work. We'll also see what affects the belt deflection and how backlash occurs in the machine. The belt behaviour was quite unexpected. I'll start with the X and move on to the more complex Y axis behaviour. And there are a couple of other sources of deflection in the frame and extrusions that we'll also need to include. Once we have all the key parts, we'll put them together into an overall deflection model of the machine, and we'll see how the cutter deflects for a known force. Here are the 50 Newton force plots for an XXL in both SI and inch pound units of horizontal X and vertical Y deflection. As we'll know by this point that the deflections vary with X and Y position, we'll ask the model to show us what that looks like. Here are the compass points of the XXL showing how the X and Y deflections for the same force vary around the work area of the machine. We'll also ask how the Shapeoko 3 compares to the XXL, see why the two machines can behave so differently. And finally, my real excuse for doing all this, what happens if we upgrade parts of the machine, or more to the point, which parts of the machine should I upgrade first, and what benefit would I expect to see? So, I'll see you in the next video.